Welcome to the Batman Book Club's Road to No Man's Land. I am your host, Ryan Lauer, and with me, as always, on this adventure, my, uh, si- I don't know, sidekick, co-pilot. Co-pilot! Robin, so, my co-pilot. Robin? Yeah, Peter Arvera. Peter Arvera, hello. Welcome. Hello. Back. Hello, Uxus. We're continuing the back half of this monstrous book that we that you talked me into buying so long ago. And look at this. Yeah, like, I really had to twist Ryan's arm to make him buy it, a Batman I mean, book. It, yeah, I know. Well, <laughs> that's true. <laughs> but we really uh, yeah. a limb there, didn't we? I mean, we have this, and then we have two more parts after this, and then bam, mm-hmm. we're on that's to it. the No Man's Land omnibus, which you to also got me. Well, once I, well, I guess once we got on the path for this one, we knew where we were heading. We were like, we've got to last another like year and a half, Pete, so we can get through all of these omnibuses, omnibuses. You think that's what it's going to take a year and a half. I mean, it depends on us, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, here we are at uh, over six months just on the one on of us, so the math okay. checks out. All right. All right. But we'll, well see. We... Maybe we'll step it into gear and next year or next month we'll like do double. We're start reading. Stop yeah. doing slackers. Read more Batman comics. Uh, yeah, this is part six, and uh, we're just going to dive into it here. And Pete, the six issues that you and I read for this one are Batman number 558. Batman number 559, Detective Comics number 725, Detective Comics number 726, Azrael, Agent of the Bat number 47, Azrael, Angel of the Bat number 48. Yeah, it was just like pairs of titles, which kind of made it a little bit nice when we relayed what the next, I mean, we did last on the last part, um, but as you and I were double checking to schedule and read everything, we say, hey, Batman Detective and Asriel. And as I noted, and it is, it's true, Detective Comics 725 and 726, check the main podcast feed for episode number 51, where I had uh, our pals, our mutual pals, the Carusos on the show. And we really broke down those two issues. So yeah, you got a little sausage, pepper, spaghetti, meatball. Huh? Look at you. <laughs> yeah. Sprinkled on my cereal. Um, the oh, way God, that, that must be horrible. <laughs> <laughs> Don't eat that's, that. the, that's the way to eat it yeah no, have them back on in april it's like 20... something out of elf <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> oh uh, yeah. back in oh. april 2021 uh great discussion so check that one uh check that one out on the made podcast speak so that was a you fun know, discussion with those people gents. people debate the merits of pineapple on pizza ryan lauer wants pancakes <laughs> pancakes yeah <laughs> Hey, whatever gets the job done, wash it down oh, with the deal. Geez. I also found it very easy to keep track as far as mm-hmm. uh, writers for each of these issues. Uh, we had some like iconic names with Batman on these issues. So for the Batman books, it was one Sir Doug Mensch. Mm-hmm. For the detective books, it was one Sir Chuck Dixon. And for the Azrael books, it was uh, one Sir Denny O'Neill. So... Yeah, I mean, some good you, people. Doesn't get much better than that, right? You, you read yeah. those credits and you're kind of like, oh, I'm in for a treat. Yeah. So, oh. I mean, some of the the most popular voices in the 90s that uh, on Batman involved in I, Batman. You, I mean, Daniel Neal, of course. I think you can even say too, all but, time. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Add them to the list. Uh, yeah. So, uh, Pete, just in, in short, then, what did you think of this batch, these six issues? I want to feel like this is the weakest of the, uh, let's say, our, our little nuggets here that we've decided to devour in mm-hmm. Road to No Man's Land, um, mostly because the Azrael stories just do nothing for me. Okay. Like, I just, I just, the two Azrael stories are just like, uh, like, I know it introduces the villain who, uh, what's his name? Who's that rock N- and roll? Is it, N- is it Nick Scratch? Yeah, Nick Scratch, the, the rock I, and roll I, villain. I just kind of felt like, what a, a not rock and roll name. <laughs> <laughs> for a villain nick scratch um, they should have asked rob myers like yeah. rob who what should we name this character yeah um so that seems to be th- th- those two really stand out but like nick scratch does play a huge role going Ooh, forward he does? okay well yeah okay so i'm sorry spoiler alert he just play. he at least plays a bigger role than what you, you can't give nothing away in these two like you're like who is this like you just you read these two issues and you're like this toss away villain nick scratch like this guy's nothing like it's just busy work for Azrael, right but yeah. like Two ish, you know, you're gonna see and in the next two- entry, you're okay. like, Oh, this guy sucks. <laughs> okay, so well, it does I mean, kind of serve a purpose. 
what he does so i can i can understand batman sends him on this mission to protect this legislator and it's kind of the only legislator in dc that has gotham's back and is trying Mm -hmm. to get gotham funding to help rebuild and sending him batman sends azrael to go and protect him and so i think it's it's just a strange inclusion of this nick scratch character but for once and maybe ryan hoss will have a little ping here when i say this like reading these two Azrael issues actually didn't bother me a whole lot. And he okay. knows that I'm not an Azrael fan because he likes to remind me of that. And I know, Lau, you're not an Azrael guy. Pew, pew, pew. Yeah. But I think, th- I think that Hoss is the only Azrael guy. <laughs> yeah. So I just, man. He's the only one I know. He's the only one I know that actually calls himself an Azrael fan. <laughs> the only one, but I don't know. I, th- um, I thought those were all right. I think I actually liked this batch. Uh, I didn't say they like it. Sure, you said like the the weakest. It's, yeah, and there's the, some the re- stuff in there. I think it's a lot of, and I knew every single time I was rehearsing this line in my head, I was forgetting what the word I was saying. But it was a lot of like reflection, I think, and kind of a status like Vesper Fairchild is. Isn't that a Bond girl's name? No, she's been a Batman like reporter. Yeah, 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 like, but. Forever. Like, as far as like the name of Vesper Fairchild, I feel like that is a that name has been used in James Bond before. Um, Maybe I have this Reno. Want. He would know. Yeah. Oh, Reno. And I don't know. Like, I know she's just kind of given a big summary in the first issue on the radio as people are listening in. And I don't know. I think I kind of like it because it, just being a, a check in because not even of this massive event that's unfolding road to no man's land. It just can't be fighting every single issue with how many issues like there's 48 issues in this omnibus every single issue can't be like okay there's an earthquake and now everybody's just fighting they need something i can feel at the time of you reading this since we have all this at our disposal we can just keep going that it reads better than if i was waiting each week each month for another issue I'm just kind of like okay this is really feeling dragged out now uh but as for i don't know reading for this batch reading it all i found it i don't know i, I thought it was pretty good there's some good Batman moments in here. There's some very good Batman Dick Grayson moments in here. Harvey Bullock has an issue pretty much almost. It seems like him and Renee have an issue all to themselves. And we see a little, yeah. bit, of, a little bit of a sweeter side of Harvey Bullock. <laughs> a little charm and of Harvey Bullock. There's a there's a, there's a a point in time. And I don't know. like I don't want to say pre-cri- pre-crisis, post-crisis. Because I don't think this fits in there with this character. But there's a point in time in Harvey Bullock's history where he's kind of like a film fanboy. But a bumbling oaf. Like he's mm-hmm. not the he's not the Harvey Bullock that we've all come to like know and expect thanks to like Betas, yeah. And even like something like even post No Man's Land, he kind of turns into that hardened I don't trust the bat, almost Brooklyn fat guy type thing. Um, it, it's it, there was a point in time where like the film buff is still in here. Like you could see it when he's flirting with the nurse. Yeah, like he's like trying to talk to her about movies and stuff. And those are was it nurse? Was it nurse Brass? Uh, I don't remember what her name was. Okay, I'm gonna. Look but this uh, up. it was cool seeing that aspect still kind of live on, you know, um, mm-hmm. because like when I first discovered bumbling moron Harvey, I was like, oh wow, this is different. This is so unique. Mm-hmm. But it, it, it's cool that they kind of blended the two together here, and uh, I, I didn't mind watching him uh, spit some game. I thought it was pretty funny. That's right, Nurse Brass. Yeah, I liked it because I don't know he he won her over at the end, and not too. I don't know, by an organic way, I think, is like the development after the hospital becomes, you know, under siege and stuff. And then you get Batman's inclusion in there to help fight the those guys. And then you have uh, Bullock and Montoya fighting off and stuff and Brass. Well, you even know, though I, I just think it back. also symbolizes how some things are still normal. Yeah. Like you can flirt with a girl in the midst of like a post post earthquake. Right. Like every, everyone's it's just still it's in, crazy. Yeah. But like. Everyone has needs, and Harvey needs a little attention right now. <laughs> and like, and like you said, though, of you know, spilling a little bit of optimism, even from Bullock's part of like, hey, after things start, basically, like once things start to get better, you want to watch some movies, you know, yeah. you want to just hang you out know? and watch some movies. Like it's gonna get better. It's like, and oh no, Harvey, we got two movie. more omnibuses left. There's no light yeah. at the end of this tunnel. <laughs> we got a year and a half here, Harv. Okay, but and then we'll, cool. we'll hop to if it. Things but... are a little bit more personal. You see, Harvey getting personal with this nurse. Mm-hmm. Uh, one of the person people who try to invade uh the ho- the hospital where Montoya and Harvey are is what was the Montoya's the guy's uh, godmother, yeah. right? Like she said, like you know, like people are now you know 
while some things can stay the same like flirting but like people are sure. literally like dividing now you can mm-hmm. see the sectors forming and this is the beginning of that like you said once like, you add to that too of kind of like i don't know basically to the lines of i don't know if he's a bad guy or if he's just trying to get food for his his kid yeah. Yeah, it's, like, it's like okay that makes it interesting because there's um, that gray area a little off-putting though is the the first like the opening pages of that the first issue dying city um mm-hmm. i should definitely mention jim aparo illustrated uh one of the greats the of batman's crying and it's kind of like i don't know how i feel about that i understand the point trying to get home with this but he, you never see him cry. Alfred. you see I alfred know. cry and that's where i'm like I don't know. but is he crying i don't know is he crying is he crying he you tell me you can't see you can't see his face he's embracing alfred oh for some reason i thought he was okay he might all be right, well, that's all right that's okay um, Alfred's I, thought, I was about ready to not be a Batman fan anymore. Like Batman doesn't cry. But okay. But yeah, I mean, Ryan I Lauer, mean men don't cry. Men don't and cry. We frolic and we frolic yeah. hard. <laughs> like, okay. Thanks, Ryan, for your for your stance on the ground here. We all we all frolic like yeah. Kermit. Yeah, yeah, yeah but know. crying, that's for wussies. That's yeah, that's where we draw a line, okay? <laughs> Go frolic in the Red field. Foreman, you saw that. everybody. <laughs> That's a compliment. Who, if I could be, yeah. I mean, who would want to be? Yeah. Kurt, what's his name? Is it Kurtwood Smith? Yeah. Yeah. You got it. I forget his name from Robocop. You know Robocop. Uh, yeah. Uh, Clarence Bonner. There you Clarence go. Clarence Bonner. Yeah. Uh, oh, good stuff. I've been wanting to rewatch that recently. So, I don't know. Some good, uh, good moments. I think the first, the Batman issues, like the opening one was the catching up on how dire mm-hmm. the situation is and stuff. And the second one was, you know, it's called Dead City. Um, Bob Hall, name not familiar. Not familiar. At times, he kind of makes Batman look like a giraffe. Long neck. <laughs> Very long neck. Hey, he, I, I, I can't help it. I like giraffes. But, long neck. <laughs> but giraffes, you know, at the zoo, uh, Toys R Us, RIP. And that's kind of, that's kind of, I don't need a giraffe with a, yeah, okay. So I just turned it now and I saw it. He's, he's swooping down and this is he's almost got the like long a, this neck. This is a, this is a Schumacher shot. It looks like, yes, but yeah, it's, that, very it's, it's, it's very Joel. It's almost like the took a wide screen and crammed it into four by three, like smushed, and his head just seems very. Um, and then I'm trying to I'm trying to get to the detective issues because, I mean, I don't need to go full on in depth with those, but I think those because I'm already did. But I mean, you can speak your piece, but I I thought those were great because you just I mean you just recently recorded uh, another podcast talking about. Uh, Batman and Robins, mm-hmm. but I think this is—I don't know. This is just basically about the two of them. I love how it opened up William Rosado. See, I'm not familiar with that name either. But you know that opening up to like a flashback period and like more of those great '50s, early '60s of like you know life-size pins at a bowling alley and knocking them down, and then coming to the the now dire situation and stuff. And um, I like. I like all of that. I thought that was a really good, you know, Dick Bruce issue. Yeah, I mean, it's just it, it's what what is that episode of B-Taz where they go back in time, and it looks like it's like very like I feel like Roger Stern. Legends of the Dark Knight. Yeah, like it. it, it that's yeah, and the what first this one is like very is almost Dick Springish. Right. Yeah. They, the they're like story, yeah. they're in the music store, or whatever, and they're riding this giant harpsichord, so, stuff like that. Like that's what yeah. it, that's what it gives me vibes of. Also, sure. um. Shout out to I think I think this is Mr. Hall here. Uh, he's I guess the original creator of the Batmo Beast. That it, it also makes an appearance in No Man's Land that I just realized. Batman just put a uh, he just painted Bigfoot black and decided to go riding around Gotham. I thought that was cool. I was like, oh wow. I was like, I like this more than the Batmo Beast. I'll just I'll just buy it and paint it. <laughs> yeah, do it. Oh my gosh. Yeah. I thought um... I thought that was pretty funny. But yeah, like the, the at the end of that issue, the conversation that Bruce and Dick have, mm-hmm. it's just and you mentioned old wounds, and it, it 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 seems like it would fit in with that conversation that Tim and and Grayson had at that point. But this almost seems like a different Bruce Wayne to me because he's like, "Hey, I I haven't gone down to the docks for a while. You want to come? Like, did you just ask Nightwing to go on a on a on a patrol? Did you just do that? Like, usually it's like, guys, night cool. out. Let's go to the docks. Yeah, I was like, did you just Plus invite Nightwing skulls. out? Like, yeah. is the, like like things are really taking a turn for the worse because you're you're asking people things <laughs> instead of directing them. Hey, come on, pal. Um, it just seems like a lighter... here. Have a night of all to ourselves. 
it just seemed like a lighter moment in a very dark time in Gotham City. You know, like Bruce mm-hmm. was just like, he's like, the, the buildings around us are falling. Like I can open up a little bit. And and you see, he's actually done a decent amount of that in this nugget here. I mean, he, he had to embrace Alfred. Alfred's sitting there in the ruins of, Essentially, it, it, even more than the cave, it's Wayne Manor, and you know yeah. that's that's basically been you know his home for how many years now? Well, how he did even did it outside of the the suit and cowl, and he did with the Vesper at the end of the first issue. Yeah, you know, and it's just you, you could see Bruce kind of open up a little bit because he's the most he's the most vulnerable he's ever been, and the mm-hmm. city's the most vulnerable it's ever been. So it's just kind of like everyone's kind of taking a step back and letting their guard down a little bit for better or worse, you know, like it's, it's mm-hmm. probably a good thing for him mentally and within his mental health. Yeah. Right. But like for the mission of Gotham city, you know, you, you need Batman to be a hard nosed veteran, you know, mm-hmm. like you kind of, you know, just kind of like chug through. So. Especially to come out of this, uh, the detective Seven Twenty Six fools errand. Uh, of course, I'm not surprised. Chuck Dixon. What a what a great best story I mean, of the bunch. I think so. Mm-hmm. I, I don't even I can't even put it in like a name because it would probably accurately, but yet not. Did you get compare. the little rises nugget? I know it's not the best way to say that, but there's a there's a rises nugget in there, even though this came out way before rises. Uh, t- I read this the other day. Is it in wait, in the art or this or the, the writing? Joker, the Joker. Uh, just go ahead and say it. I don't want to take up. Time. Uh, when he's in the cell and Batman's asking him the date of significance, and the Joker goes, "Is it Saint Swithin's Day?" Uh, Saint yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, is the yeah. So, uh, Sucker Kowalski uh, <laughs> rises is great. Uh, another nod to that. That's wonderful. Um, yeah, so I, I thought that was cool. Shout out to Hoss. He'll appreciate he, that. You but. know that I would never lie to you. I really did think with Swithin's and reading it, you saying that, and I was kind of like, "Oh!" And then, I oh just, yeah, I I mean, I'm sure you did. You're just kind of. I didn't like, take you, notes. You got a brain fart. Yeah, it's all good. Yeah, I didn't take notes this time. Uh, but I think that this is a. Oh, it's one of the Joker's most great. probably like evil plans, right? Yeah, because I mean, at the end of it, all of it is of like you usually approach a situation expecting the worst, um, and this time I I got you to where now you have hope, and like basically I'm setting you up to be hopeful next time. And then I'm like, you know what I mean? It, it, and then oh, you, I you're, love it. you're gonna open yeah. up a trunk and they're not gonna be alive next time. But you think like, so because you got a victory this time around. And I'm like, that's a little messed up. See, this is kind of like where I put my foot in my mouth because earlier I said this is the weakest bunch, but like this story makes up for those two Azrael stories. Yeah. Like it does it this this say this that doesn't, uh, this, it that picks doesn't up contradict anything that you just said. You know, I just it, it does pick up as the a slack. whole. Yeah. I mean it's sometimes as a, some things as a whole. Is it yeah. great? But it's like, oh, but there's moments of really good stuff, and then vice versa too. So I don't think that contradicts anything because, yeah, I'd put, I put it up there like this is a great. And I, I, I told you that I've read No Man's Land, and the whole time the once. clock's running down too, which also like, yeah, it gives you a sense of like urgency as you read the issue. Yeah, and you're bouncing back and forth. So like the, the left side when looking at this is after the first couple of pages, then the left side kind of becomes quote unquote, the future. And then the right side becomes the present. And mm-hmm. so then you can go back and read through it. How like just a variety of ways that you can do it. I would just read the right side, then go back, read the left side or bounce back and forth. Or I don't know. It's a, like it reminded me a little bit of like the, the wedding issue number 50 of Batman mm-hmm. by Tom King. Okay. Of, you just kind of have a variety of ways that you can read that, revisit it, et cetera. Mm -hmm. Uh, but I told you before that I did, I've read no man's land once before. And those were in the, those are in the paperbacks that I guarantee didn't include as much as omnibuses do. No, no, no. So if I read the, the, that issue before I kind of didn't remember. And then covering it with the Caruso's, it was like, I might as well, might as well just say like, this is the first time I'm reading it. Cause I don't remember this, this one. And I loved it then. And so then, yeah, when I, we talked about it last time. I'm like, I think those are the two issues I talked to them. Got to them here, and I was like, Oh, I remember these. And this one was still a joy to read it. Again. To be honest, that's one of my favorite things about publishing is just like what they don't put in, like mm-hmm. the initial trade run. 
and then yeah. you know, obviously you get the extended, uh, the extended, the, the extended, extended edition. Ex- yeah, the extended versions, and then now this. So like, mm-hmm. and I have all three versions of No Man's Land. I of course you do. It's day. your long Halloween. Yes, it is. It's very, it's it's very long. Funny thing with that <laughs> though is that I got the paperbacks of Nightfall, the three that are Ooh. like the ex- the the thick ones because I had oh, I got yeah. the the short ones that they released in the nineties of like the very basic. I think it's just a and story. Then, and then I got these ones, and then yeah, Haas was like, "Oh, you need to get the omnibuses." Yeah, that has everything. I'm like, "Well, I need to go back and buy all the omnibuses now." Damn it! <laughs> yep. Damn it! That's but, a lot of money. How many omnibuses more, are there for Nightfall? Three. Okay. I feel like the, I think the spine of them are is is different in each, or it's like two are the same and one's different. Um, Maybe. Didn't love the covers for them from Kelly Jones either. There, I think they were new covers by Kelly Jones, and I I loved so much what he did in the '90s with covers. And this stuff. omnibus is actually that would have been thinner than my omnibus for Blackest Night, and I think my omnibus for Jeff Johns Teen Titans is slightly bigger than that. You show me that one. That oh one's a, I think that's the biggest omnibus <laughs> as I look at it. That I think is the a Teen monster. Titans ones is the, is the biggest one. Yeah, I think I so, can use it as an anchor for a, a boat. <laughs> so. How Nick Scratch, you said that he this is a quick little introduction of him, which I do in the think the next cluster he'll play a bigger part when we get into Mr. Wayne Goes to Washington. So, in which does that start to dip into No Man's Land, or is that probably still? Oh, uh, that list? dips into uh, I mean, well, I it's very, I don't want I don't, that's that, too you don't know, spoil, too, okay? Yeah, we're okay, not gonna okay. spoil it, but it's okay, it's good. okay, 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 <laughs> the Danny O'Neill though he does I think he does a, a good job of two issues because I do think at the end they put in putting Azrael in the uh, the predicament that he's in of like you can stay and take us down but then police will be here and basically we're gonna it's gonna be on you or you can bail and you'll get out but it's still gonna be on you and like puts him in quite a quite a situation it's uh it's interesting because I would not have read this, these two stories, if it was not for the omnibus. I don't think. Oh, definitely not. I'm curious as if it's in the reprint. As I don't remember, I remember Scratch, but I don't remember. I don't remember like Azrael going to a rock concert, being questioned by the bouncer, and then claiming he's in the band. <laughs> you know, like I don't remember. Yeah. I feel like that stuff would have stuck out to my head as a kid. Um, I wonder if it's in the original in any of the other printings because this might have been the first time I've read this myself. Really, I remember Scratch going from Mister Wayne goes Washington. Like in the, in the next chapter, he's he's a lot more prevalent. But like here, like I'm reading this, like oh, he's just like a he's he's like a fake member of Kiss, yeah. <laughs> right? Like that's kind of he's got his nipples pierced, he's got this, face paint. Like it's just weird. No, Kiss doing. Kiss was better. Uh, but I I kind of didn't get the the you know as the fire and you get the full concert scene of Nick Scratch and it's like thank you everybody everybody except for Jabba the Hutt I see you Jabba sitting in the back looking for Leia hey bad news she's run off with the Emperor she's got a thing for older guys I'm like what am I, I just don't get here? the whole rock <laughs> rock thing like, that doesn't make any sense all, all of that I was like what, what does that mean is that something that I like was there a rock star that was really popular and kind of douchey and this is like their way of making fun of him at the time, like I don't know, it was like Axel Rose just being extra jerky. <laughs> this time. Yeah, I mean, it's just weird. It, everything about the whole rock for... and roll angle is very, very strange. Yeah, if anyone ever ask... interviewed Denny O'Neill and had an interview that I haven't heard, I'd love to listen to it. Maybe by some asked. miracle, an unearthed interview, yeah. audio interview. Yeah, release, release it, release the Denny From, interview. Yeah, really, is uh, somebody has like a really great podcaster <laughs> that they haven't shared with the world. That'd be that'd be cool. It would be so cool. your standout of this bunch is definitely that Detective Seven Twenty Six. Yeah, definitely. It I'm also has him. my favorite piece of art, which which is a which small part? piece. Ooh, it, it it's it's actually um, it's Batman in his motorcycle helmet as he's pulling up to Arkham Asylum, and you could see the reflection of the asylum in the visor. Yeah, like that's just I, I just think that's a really cool shot. Or just a really cool panel, like a really yeah. cool, just wonderful artwork, and Peter. that's actually my with the lightning and everything. Like it's my favorite. That's awesome. It's subtle, it's small. I like that one. Yeah, mm-hmm. the first uh, Batman five fifty eight. 
image I'd have to say is as he's going to the graveyard to see the Waynes. And we didn't talk about that scene at all, really. That's a really great scene. Like the fact mm-hmm. that he's, you know, patrolling yeah. even the smallest of the, you know, something that, you know, not necessarily this always like, works out well when I show the screen, but I'm going to do it anyway. Like all that. So yeah. I should just go back here like this. No, it's great. It's just, I know it's his parents and like everything, it. but like the fact that he's still like, nothing can really be stolen, but then, oh, wait, it can be. Yeah, it gets pretty much. So it's up. a good thing Batman was there, wasn't he? It's not too out of. It's not too unrealistic, either. For what yeah. those goons are doing, like there are some. I mean, they're they're, they're, trash. they're grave robbers, right? And it's also kind of funny though, too. But like, you're gonna steal this stuff. It's like, okay, who are you gonna sell it to? Like, you know, got them. How you gonna get out of the city? And how are you gonna get out of the city? You're not. You know? so, but, but, but hey, so later funny, on, I got later him. on, later on, a diamond ring might be worth somebody who you know, maybe some upper echelon criminal who has some sort of underground empire who yeah. might have a thing to hmm. do. You don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, Azrael got out of the city, no problem. Apparently, we didn't see how he got out of the city. Next thing you knew, he was just driving on the countryside in a car. Hey, look! When you got when with you his got lovely the blonde beast? locks blowing in the air. Oh God, jeez! No, it's Classic. like how did Batman get back to Gotham City and Royce? I was just about ready to go there. Like, where's our scenes? Where's our montage? Where's how does he do this? <laughs> I don't believe it. The most resourceful human being on the entire planet. How could he do this okay. in the city that he has lived in his entire life? How could he do this? I don't know. I don't believe. It. Um. Okay, any other like high points of the batch, or do you think we get we got them? I think we covered everything for lots think? of great oval stuff. The oval was very yellow prevalent. oval shining yeah. in the dark times. And night and night nice black suit Batman. It seemed like it, it was very much of the uh, of the cinematic times, all rubber, right? Like it looked like yeah. one of those with the nice blue accents. Um, yeah, I mean, overall, like my only complaint really is I didn't like the Azrael issues too much, uh, too much, and uh, Mister Hall. A little bit long in the neck. Yeah. But overall, you know, like the, the good really does outweigh what I would consider the bad. Or that was kind of like Rosado. Bad. Rosado did the uh, giraffe. Oh, it was yeah, Rosado not Hall? Well, I'm sorry, Mr. Hall. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Let's get that right. Okay. Don't need people coming after you, Pete. Okay. Oh, wait. You hold got on the a orders second. Name, bro. Hold on a second. Pete, you. It was Bob Hall. I stand corrected. Oh, yeah. well, yeah. look who needs to apologize Canceled. now, Lauer. No. I am give sorry, me Peter Vera. When everybody... Yeah, okay. <laughs> give me 20. I'll give, you, I'll give you seven. Give me 20 um, pages right now, Lauer. <laughs> 20 pages. 20 apologies. Um. Okay. Well, hey, that, that covers part six of Road to No Man's Land. Like I said, this is Pete fun. and I have two more... Two more parts left of this omnibus, and then it's on to No Man's Land. If if the people want it, if Pete and I want to do it, yeah, Pete and I want to do it, so we'll go ahead and do it. Um, but for next time, do your yeah, do you the guys work. really have no say in the project. Do the work for next time, right, Pete? Always do the work. We're always doing the work here. Always doing the work. The next issues, next we don't talk about things unless part. we read about them. You know, that's right. Uh, you have yeah. the Batman Chronicles number fifteen, mm-hmm. Batman number five sixty, Batman number five sixty one. Detective Comics number 727, Detective Comics number 728, and Batman Shadow of the Bat number 80. By titles alone, any of those spring anything in your mind that you can think of. You don't have to tell me what it is. Just does anything sound um we are you already read real, them? We are in for a real treat. Okay. Oh no, well I already read them, but I already know. Like I Okay. Mr. Wayne Goes to Washington is probably some of the most iconic Bruce Wayne material wow. ever written and uh i think it's wonderful i think we're all gonna love it i think if you guys are following along with us you're gonna be blown away by it because it's bruce wayne who does uh pretty much all the all the dirty work here the batman's involved but it's it's all on bruce wayne's shoulders here as he uh he comes to washington dc so it's it, it's a fun Thanks. time and it's uh it's different you know you don't normally get a little bit about out of gotham and uh mm-hmm. you know it, when we do and it's as good as this you know it makes you appreciate it a little bit more so um i'm yeah. all ready for it i'm excited i did read it i've read it in the past but uh as anyone knows i am a huge fan of the storyline so this is one of the best parts pre no man's land so the, i would say mr wayne goes to washington is probably the best of of road to no man's land so yeah. we're in for a real treat cool 
Uh, yeah, I can't wait to you? reread you it. No, nothing, nothing springs. I'm excited. Of nothing, course. nothing. That's nothing, why we're nothing. gonna. I think that's why we're gonna double, double up next month. Because mm -hmm. I don't think that I'll just read these next six and be like, cool. Let's wait another month. And you I'll said fish sticks gonna join us next weekend or when we do this? No. Oh, <laughs> all right. Well, I yeah. thought everyone. I thought everyone was in for uh, you know a special surprise. No, we gotta wait till the Aquaman crossover. And then bring oh. bring Marin. So there we go. So okay. Um, so for for uh, brightest day, yeah, yeah. There you go. There you go. Yeah, we're, that works. we're bringing it for the brightest day read. <laughs> yep. Uh. So hey, go ahead, um, Peter. Uh, you can follow me on social media. That's Twitter, Instagram, Mastodon, and Zach Snyder's favorite platform, Vero. Oh, Mastodon. Gotta love Mastodon. Everyone was so worried about Twitter yeah. for like two yeah. weeks. <laughs> um. You can follow uh, my news-based podcast that I co-host for the champion of Long Island, Eric Holzman. Champion! Straight to Gotham, at straight underscore O underscore G on both Instagram and Twitter. We have a Facebook group and a Facebook pan fan page. Consider joining both. I have a Spider-Man podcast that I co-host with Nicholas and Nico Caruso. Uh, Italians for Spidey on Twitter, the Italian Spider-Man Coalition podcast. Check that out. That's good stuff there. Um, I'm all over BatmanOnFilm.com, all over Batman on Film YouTube. I've got, uh, I'm, I'm hosting an episode of Batman Animation, Batman Animation, whatever. Batman Ryan Animation. Hoss. Yeah, Batman Animation. I'm hosting an episode of that with uh, Ryan Haas. So we're talking a little old wounds. So a couple of Robins get together. Um, I've got interviews with Uslin and Tara Strong. Oh uh, for the Zaddies, I've got a written review with uh, Rich Citrone. So you guys can check that out. You know, we love the Zaddies. Um, you guys are big and popular around these parts. Um, what else we got here? At Team Yellow Oval, check that out because Keaton's back under the cowl and that's going to cause yes. a lot of hysteria this summer wait till the super bowl weekend you guys are gonna go nuts and Let's get uh, nuts. yeah we'll get nuts huh we get nuts yes laura why don't you <laughs> frolic over to my rhubarb and uh take it away frolic you know i always frolic well thanks for uh co-piloting yet again peter arvera um follow batman book club on twitter and instagram at the batman bc and yeah uh we'll continue on the road to no man's land next time so until then peter read my batman comics books